Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the next build that we're going to do for you. Um, incidentally, if you're new, I've had a few, um, I've had a few more subs lately. Uh, welcome, thank you for subbing, and um, let's hope we can crack a few more of these out. Uh, this is obviously Airfix's uh, F5. It's going to be uh, Hawker Hunter. Now, this is one of my favourite aircraft, as you can, as you can see, it's absolutely a stunner. Um, the Hunter, I love it. Uh, so here we are. This is what we're all in bits and pieces here. You can see that we haven't done anything. Um, I'm actually going to be throwing some bits at this. I did, or oh, I have got this um, rather nice resin cockpit, but it's for the Academy uh, kit. And I've, I've had a quick look, um, and it doesn't actually fit. And I don't think I could make it fit because it's a bit smaller in um, size. So. I think I'm going to leave it. I don't think I'm going to bother. So, what I've done in its place <laughs> is just get a seat. <laughs> so, one from a full resin cockpit just, just to a seat. So, well, I don't mind, it's fine. Y you're not going to see a lot in the cockpit anyway. British cockpits tend to be, um, especially um, Cold War jets are all black. There's not a lot to see anyway. So, you know. You'll see the seat, but that's probably what we need to do. The um, I'm going to have a boarding ladder. That's a Bren gun thing. That's okay. I've also got some resi kit wheels. The wheels that are actually on the kit aren't too bad at all. Uh, so I might not use these. I don't know. We'll have to see near the time. But uh, they're quite nice as well. Now the scheme we're going to be doing is just a box scheme. And that might seem a bit boring. Let's, there is a... There it is. It might seem a bit boring, but... Love it. That's what we're going to be doing. This is um, this is a number one squadron. This is from uh, Operation Musketeer uh, in '56. Um, now that's that's a stunner to me. You can see it not glaring. Uh, you know, that's a stunning thing. So obviously we're going to be painting the stripes. There are decal stripes, but we'll paint these. So it's standard, pretty much mid fifties camo. You've got um, a dark green, dark sea gray over a silver um, under the undersides. Um, obviously that would be the silver paint as opposed to aluminium um, silver, uh, bare metal, so it's silver paint. So that's where my favourite uh, Tamiya LP11 will come into that one. Um, you know, cockpit, relatively, it's okay. There's not a lot to it. Like I say, you're not going to see a lot. The the cockpit, the kit seat, where is it? I've just seen it. Where is it? Gone now. Oh, there she is. Um, there's a bit of a difference. There's a bit of a difference there. Actually, the actual kit seat is not that bad at all. If he's having the canopy down, you'd probably get away with that. So, yeah. So, this should be... Um, starting straight away. I'd like to bring a few more um, Operation Musketeer or Suez Crisis aircraft too. But it's... Um, I can't think there's be too much interest in it other than me. But anyway. Let's get on with it. So quickly made up the Airfix cockpit, and you can see it's, well, you see the difference in detail. And you can see as well that the resin one, which is for the Academy kit, is a little bit smaller. And because underneath you've got, it moulds in with the um, forward undercarriage um, little bay there, and there isn't obviously there isn't one how are you going to fix that to that it'll just be an absolute nightmare so um you could say unbottling it <laughs> you could say that uh, but unbottling it there you go um i might well use like the joystick the joystick is quite nice i mean that could that would go in there nicely i might see if i can use the um use the um instrument panel perhaps but that one's not too bad with a bit of a dry brush that would be okay the decals to go on this i might try that one first um uh, and maybe the side walls if i can use them but I, I i don't know i don't think i'll be able to like i say you know 
here's the aircraft, you know, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Um, you're not going to see a lot of the area, you're not going to see that much. I know it might make for a nice viewing, but um, <laughs> it, it, the final analysis is, when it's posed like this, you ain't going to see it. So, um, anyway, so we're going to carry on and um, we'll see what parts of the this resin one I can use. So we've got the uh, we've got some painting done. Um, cockpit has been put together as best as I can. Um, instrument panel and the resin quick blue seat. So I'm going to do a bit of uh, dry brushing. Um, oh, so before I mention, before I go any further, the uh, interior is this NATO back from MRP. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of dry brushing. Um, just to pick out some detail, you know, British cockpits are pretty much uh, black. <laughs> uh, they're a bit boring. Let's uh, let's say it how it is. So we need a bit of something just to liven them, give them some sort of life, something to look at. So I'm going to do that. Also, uh, the best information I could get for intakes um, was a, a dirty grey colour. I, I I don't know what a dirty grey is, so. I'm sprayed in like a grey, this is MLP grey, I don't even know what grey it is. Uh, and we'll dirty them up with some oil, uh, uh, oil paint, which we'll do shortly. We're now left with a, um, a gap here, both sides, and oops, and underneath. Uh, you can't quite say it like that. That needs to be filled. So I'm going to go with. I'm going to use some talcum powder. Uh, yes, that is talcum powder, and um, super glue. I'm going to fill this, and uh, obviously then we need to sand it back, and then we need to to re any. Um, 
any lines that need prescribing. So uh, that's going to be my next task. Well, welcome back, uh, chaps. Well, I say welcome back. Um, <laughs> I've just uh, come in through a real bad case of uh, lot loss of mojo. Um, it really was um, a close run thing, whether I'll ever come back, to be honest with you. Um, but we're back with, um, you know, it was it's just one of them live things, I guess. Um, it did completely go from me. Um, I have to say, it's... Um, it's a funny old thing, isn't it? Anyway, so we're back. Obviously, uh, we've filled in some of these the, the gaps here for the for this little fillet. Um, we've gone a bit of a done a bit of a uh, black primer, and we've sanded this down with some. Um, I can't remember what I did it with. Now sanding stick, perhaps I don't really know. Just to get it nice and smooth. So we're going to um, start painting. So what we're going to start painting is. Uh, obviously the uh, musketeer stripes so what I'm going to be going with we're going to have like an undercoat if you like if you will don't hear that word said in modeling pylons very often do we? it's going to be like an undercoat of pink for the yellow this is my favorite black this night black from MRP it's absolutely lush great for propellers as well so they're going to be the three colors we use to get these uh, stripes on so let's go and and let's go and do that now. This is how we are um, after demasking. Uh, we've had a gloss coat. I've put a gloss coat on here. Um, no, you don't need one, in my opinion. I've already started doing a Declan. Um, you don't need one for Declan, but it just makes more the aircraft more tacti tactile. Tactile? Tactile, um, to be honest with you. You don't have to worry about fingerprints. You don't have to worry about muck on your hands or anything. It's just a nicer thing to to uh, to get to to get to handle. Uh, as I say, I've had a go at a couple just to see how they go down. Like cartograph decals, they'll be absolutely uh, absolutely fine. So we'll come, we'll get these on, and we'll come back and see what she looks like. So we've literally uh, just finished the last stencil. Um, I think it was one of these around here on the tail somewhere. Now <laughs> there's a lot of stencils on here. So the deckling is all done. The next thing that will happen will be a, um, a semi mat, I think. Um, I'll have a semi mat or a semi gloss, whichever I can find first, uh, just to seal everything all in uh, and then prepare for a bit of um, 
a little bit of weathering. It won't be it won't be a lot. Just a little paddle line wash, probably. Maybe a bit of streaking here and there. But uh, that's where we're up to, up to, up to now. Mm -hmm.